everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Quick Strike. As always, my name is Jake Ricker, alongside my co-host, Michael Wax. Michael, the Tampa Bay Lightning took on the Florida Panthers today. Top two teams in the NHL, and the Lightning would win it in a thriller by a score of 5-3. to three. Michael, how are you doing today? Doing great. What a game this was. Uh, what a win this was for the Lightning and we'll definitely get into some positives and negatives. We'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments. What did you like from this game? What did you not like? We will res be responding to some fan questions as well. So if you ever have a fan question after one of these games, be sure to leave it under the tweet that asked for the questions. But cannot wait in to get into this absolute barn burner of a game. Barn burner is the, uh, the probably way to describe this because right in that first period, Michael, I was covering the game for the first time a little while today, and I could almost barely keep up because things were going crazy right away. And this really, Michael, to me, felt like a playoff level type of game. You got that feeling. Tempers were high. There were lots of shots on goal back and forth. Uh, really built the intensity, which is something you love to see from the, the Florida rival perspective and just from this type of game in general, this is going to be a great playoff matchup if it happens down the road. Yeah, I think that the Lightning are most likely going to play the Panthers at some point in the playoffs, which this was a playoff type atmosphere. The only reason they wouldn't is because they would play Carolina because the way it shakes out right now, Florida and Carolina would play each other in the first round. Both of those guys are bo both of those teams, I should say, are fantastic opponents. Like the top three in our division really go to show that there is a huge uh, dispersion of the best teams and the worst teams in not only the NHL, but in the division itself. Uh, so I'm really happy with the way that the Lightning played overall, especially in this playoff type game. They weren't perfect, and we'll get into that. And unfortunately, they did lose someone pretty big. But overall, it was a really, really solid game. Well, let's talk about those negatives because we always like to end on positive notes. So let's get that out of the way. You mentioned we lost someone pretty big in this game, and that was Ryan McDonough. Uh, actually, Michael, I didn't even notice it. I did not see the play on which he got injured. Uh, Dave Randorf and and Brian Ingbaum didn't even see it as well. They only noticed it later when they were like, hang on, we haven't seen McDonough on the ice. That's pretty weird. We normally talk about him a lot in the game. and later relayed to them that he was out for the remainder of the game with a lower body injury. Uh, but this can be pretty big. We know the Lightning are already pretty thin on defense uh, when it comes to that, especially on the right-handed side. And McDonough is a huge – he's the number two guy for the Lightning on defense. He's really good at blocking shots. He's out there. It could have really helped him out to in line for the, the end of the game when they had that six-on-five after four had pulled their goalie. Uh, but this could, this could prove a little bit difficult for the Lightning. This means foot. Uh, guys like Luke Shen will probably step back into the lineup – uh, if we'll have to take a little more ice time on. Uh, hopefully, though, this is not too serious of an injury. Well, Mikhail Sergachev, get ready to step up into a left-handed top four role. Uh, and honestly, and this is not a dig against Luke Shen. I think Luke Shen provided can be a solid seventh defenseman. But since McDonough's injury it does impact the left side of defense, Andres Borgman could be seeing a little bit more time. That's and true. I'm not going to lie, like, I did not hate when he played in his first game uh, a couple of games ago. I know he was on the ice for, I think it was one or two goals, but he's fast. He's mobile. Uh, he's able to have a decent sense of awareness uh, overall. I know he didn't on those two goals, but for the rest of the game, he played pretty well. And if we are going to see someone step into the lineup in terms of six defensemen, I think Borgman is your guy. If we're going to go 11 and seven at any point, Definitely put both Borgman and Shen into the lineup. I do wonder as well if we're going to see some sort of call-up. Uh, we don't have any particular defensemen besides the typical Ruda and Foot and Borgman on the taxi squad. But you look into Sh Syracuse, the people like Sean Day have been having a great uh, thing, and I understand that Sean Day is right-handed, but you call him up potentially to the taxi squad if this continues to happen, like you said, didn't understand why McDonough was out. Didn't actually see the play develop. I don't think a lot of people did, but if this is a long-term thing, which John Cooper said 
I hope it's not. I hope it's not too serious. Then it's going to be a problem. Yeah, and as John Cooper mentioned, hopefully this is not a serious issue and he can get back relatively quickly. We've had a couple of defensemen get hurt this year, and luckily they've been able to come back pretty quick. So, uh, But we will keep an eye on that up to you as soon as we find out. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Bay underscore Bolts to be kept up on all the latest things and news and notes for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, Michael, let's talk about the next negative here, and that was, for me, the penalties. Uh this has been something we have talked about in almost every single Quick Strikes episode. Uh, it just seems like it's becoming more and more of a problem for the Bulls. They cannot stay out of the box. I don't know what it is about them. Now, granted, some of these penalties are very soft calls or they're you know penalties that make sense, but still, they're, they have so many at this point that there's always a few in there that can be easily avoided. Like, for example, for me personally, the call against Ross Colton. I know a lot of people were upset about that call, but the fact of the matter is if Ross Colton keeps on his gloves there, he obviously lost his cool, which is understandable. And Ross Colton has been amazing. Let me just get that out of the way. Um, maybe that doesn't get called there though. And they don't have to go down at the end of the game there. There's definitely got to be some point here though, where the, the line has to get drawn and the line has to stop taking penalties because it will come back to bite them. And actually, Michael, two of the people that have been taking penalties is Goodrow and Coleman as of late. And they are our two best penalty killers. And when you don't have them out there, the other team's going to score goals. The Panthers did that today too. Yeah, the penalties is quite unfortunate. Another thing that goes hand in hand with, the penalty kill has not been very good over the past couple of games. I understand that last game they killed off five on three. They were perfect. They were uh, four for four on the penalty kill. But when you take so many penalties, you're giving the opportunity to the opponent to get as many shots in net as possible with you down a man. And a lot of these teams, whether it is Chicago with uh, Alex DeBrincat and Patrick Kane or Florida with people like Jonathan Huberto and Alexander Barkov, or Carolina, when we face them with Sebastian Ajo, uh, Nino Niederreiter, Tebo Teravainen, all those guys, that is going to bite you. And it has for the Lightning over the past couple of games. I think that if they want to stop taking penalties, uh, silly penalties as well, like you mentioned the Colton one, which I understand why he did it. I'm not a fan of it. He does need to be aware that it is a one goal game with about three minutes left to go. Another thing that I didn't like was right after the four to three goal that Tyler Johnson scored, the lightning went right back to the penalty kill. Do you know why? Because Barkley Goudreau, who has been taking so many penalties over the past couple of games, took another one because he high sticked someone off the face off. Like, these are simple, corrected things that should be solved very soon for the Lightning. Otherwise, if you keep taking four, five, possibly even six or seven penalties in a game, you will get scored on more often than not. And it allows one other thing, and I'll stop my little thing after this, but one of the things that it allowed is for the Panthers to have the extra guy in front of the net. And that only not only led to traffic in front, it led to the two deflections that went by Curtis McElhaney. And honestly, like it was not a good performance by the penalty killers. They were very stagnant. Yeah, and it's almost amazing that it hasn't caught up to them quite yet with taking all their penalties. Luckily, it has not. Hopefully, that's something they can get corrected very soon. Uh, one last negative, at least for me, and then, Mike, I'll give you a chance to add any of the negatives that you might have from this game before we get into our positives. Uh, Andre Pallott did not have a good game today. Uh, I love Pallott, as you guys may know. I've been talking very highly of him as of late. He's still been not one of his best starts he's had in his entire career. Heck, if this was a full 82-game season, and he'd be on pace to break multiple records. He still is, actually, even with the 56-game season. But uh, it, the last couple of games have not been great from Pilat. Uh Specifically in this game, he had a really bad turnover that led to the Florida Panthers' first goal, uh, which was a big problem for him. Now, technically, he could have had an empty net goal today, uh, but he made a selfless act and passed the puck to Braden Point to give him that empty net goal uh, to get the dagger. So I think he got better as the game went on today, but early first period definitely was not good. I think this is just a little funk for Palat, though. I mean, you can't be too mad at the guy because he's had such a good start to the season. 
Yeah, just because you're a winger that puts up points doesn't mean you're necessarily having a great season. Uh, I look at Patrick Kane. I know that's a hot take, but, you know, guy puts up a ton of points. Not really that good. Sorry, guys. Uh, But, you know, Palat has been putting up the points. He's backed it up with his defensive play. But over the past couple of games, he has struggled, Uh, whether it's uh, turnovers or I think he took a penalty in there as well. Uh, He has not made a considered effort in the 200-foot game. Uh, The turnover today was just awful. And the turnovers against Chicago yesterday were just awful. (laughs) So, you know, I think that is one of the ways that we look at Curtis McElhaney's performance, and we'll get to him later. But we go and we say, you know, that first goal, some people would say, you got to stop that. Like, you're just flopping around like a fish in the net. You got to stop that. But that play would have never happened if it was a clean exit of the zone by Andre Palat. And it wasn't. He didn't see who was coming. He got pickpocketed, and it ended up going in the back of the net. Yeah, and, you know, I really do think, though, that this is a little bit just a bad little – this happens to every player. They have bad streaks that go on. The question for Palat is, can he make adjustments and get back to the player he was? I fully expect him to do that. Uh, But you mentioned Curtis McElhinney. Let's talk about him now, getting into some of our positives from this game because there was a lot of things to be happy about in this game because Lightning play very, very well overall. Curtis McElhinney, though, had been getting a lot of pressure from fans, a lot of fans calling uh, for his head, really. Uh, But he played a great game today. You know, there were three goals against. Uh, Two of them, I thought, weren't really his fault at all. Maybe you could have said in that second goal, he should have had that one and controlled the rebound a little bit more. Uh, But overall, Curtis Chris Maglin, he made some fantastic saves, uh, especially when he needed to. And in that last couple minutes there when Florida had the empty net. So Curtis Maglin, great game. I love putting up, putting him up against the test here against the Florida Panthers where a lot of people expected Vasilevsky to start. Yeah. And I would have liked to have seen what we saw last game from uh, John Cooper, where Curtis Maglin started, which was give Vasilevsky the entire night off once again and make, I believe, Spencer Martin is the backup right now. It might be Chris Gibson. I'm not exactly sure. He is the third string uh, goalie. But make those guys the backup. Those are the types of performances that fuel McElhaney into having a very good game. We saw it against Nashville. He didn't have the greatest performance against the Red Wings, but the idea was there. Today, he said probably to Curtis, okay, you know, you've struggled. Let's not... Mind words with Curtis. We defend him all the time. He's had some bad goals against. He struggled a little bit. And he came out and he had one of his best games in a Tampa Bay Lightning uniform. Uh, the Lightning's defense was not spectacular tonight. They did allow a lot of opportunities for the Panthers. But you look at every single thing that Curtis McLean either faced or that went by him. And you say, well, you can't really blame him for anything that went by him. And everything he faced, he stopped, like everything else. And some of those saves, you wouldn't expect a 37-year-old to make. So a very, very solid performance from Curtis McElhinney. I hope this is a sign of things to come for him as the backup. And I'm not expecting him to put up 920, 930 save percentages uh, every single night. But I'd like him to be able to be around that you know 905 mark as the backup I think that is exactly what the lightning need when they and they need to give Andre Vasilevsky a night off occasionally that's what they need is they need somebody that will stop a decent amount of shots And he showed tonight that he has the capability to do that. This is what we know he can do. So hopefully this can give him a nice boost of confidence and that can continue. Uh, Michael, speaking of the defense, no, definitely wasn't perfect tonight, but somebody that he just continues to make a case of why he should win a Norris trophy. Another Norris trophy is Victor Hedman. I thought he made some great plays in this game, specifically on one of the breakaways. He was able to break that up with no problem. Didn't get the penalty call. Victor Hedman just can't he's almost like Andre Vasilevsky where he's just so good you don't know how he can amaze you yet he continues to do that Victor Hedman had a really good game tonight I thought yeah Hedman was great I thought specific players from the defense had great games but Victor Hedman was by far the best of the bunch and he normally is you know he's not only a leader but he is a fantastic player 
He's a great mentor to the young guys. You know, you can see when he's playing with Sergachev, he plays a different style than he does with someone like Cal Foote. And I understand that they are about six months apart in age, but I believe this is Sergachev's fourth season in the NHL. So Sergachev sort of has an idea of what he's doing. Meanwhile, Cal Foote, he's taking a little bit of time to grow into the NHL game. So Hedman takes on a little bit more of a responsibility. You know, Jan Rude, he's a, a veteran. He knows what he's doing for the most part. Sometimes Hedman has to make up for him uh, due to a de- defensive lapse. It happens all the time with everybody. Uh, you know, people make mistakes. But it seems like so, uh, Hedman really defends and changes his game based on who he's playing with, which is something you can't say uh, about a lot of people. He's really a Swiss Army knife. Now, as far as who I thought had, you know, the best probably eye test game, wow, Eric Chernak is so good. Like, we talk about him as a defensive dynamo because he's on that pairing with Ryan McDonough, and he doesn't score a lot of points, but he makes sure that the – points are the goals against are few and far between on his end of the ice. Oh my God. Like he, that Cologne goal, he showed that he can do what he wants when he wants to jump up in the play and nobody can take him off his feet because he's giant. So I just, there's so many good things to say about Eric Chernak and he has, again, like other people on the defense struggled at times but when he's on his game, he can easily be the second best defender on the team. And that's saying a lot, considering Ryan McDonough and Mikhail Sergachev are also on this team. The, the Lightning defense has, you know, they've got a lot of good pieces in there. And when they're on, they are on. It can be really, really good. Uh, just two quick more things from the positive before we get into the fan questions, Michael. And I'll say both of these real quick so you can respond to those. And then I don't want to make this video too long on, on everybody. But um, I thought the fourth line had another great game today. The combination of Maroon, uh, Matthew Joseph, and Ross Colton. They are, they've been fantastic these last couple of games. I love to see Ross Colton getting some consistent games in at this point. I believe this is his fourth game in a row, uh, which is awesome to see for him. He played another really good game overall. Matthew Joseph has been good. He got a goal in tonight's game. His speed and his ability to get in front of the net is absolutely fantastic. And then the other thing, Michael, Brace yourself for this because your jaw just might drop to the floor. We've mentioned how the Lightning have gotten really good at the faceoffs in the last couple of the games, but today, at the end of the day, they won 60% of their faceoffs. So a round of applause to the Tampa Bay Lightning centers in the faceoff circle. They were fantastic today. They lost a couple at the end in key moments, but I can't complain. 60%, that's just awesome. 60% with Barkley Goudreau going uh, 20% in the dot and Braden Point going 33% in the dot. <laughs> That's really good. So, you know, kudos to them. Guys like Stam Coast and Tyler Johnson stepped up. But you're right. The fourth line has been really solid for the Lightning ever since Ross Colton became that permanent center. Uh, we seem like we talk about them every game. I'm going to, you know, keep uh, my my – uh, favoritism to a minimum here, but very solid performance by them overall. And I don't think any of them had above 10 minutes, but they did what they needed to do. The highest on ice was Ross Colton with nine minutes and 41 seconds. They did exactly what they needed to do in certain situations. Your fourth line in terms of the lightning is one of your fastest lines. Colton and, and Joseph get in there on the four check, Get in front of the net. Pat Maroon, you're a little bit slower, so come in when you can. Ring the puck around the boards, and good things will happen. And we saw that exactly with this play uh, with Joseph's goal. So fourth line, even if they play eight to ten minutes a night, they will probably make an impact on more nights than not. No question about it. Now let's jump into these fan questions before we wrap up this 
recap here. Uh, this first one comes from Connor McMinn. I again apologize if I mispronounce his name anytime I'm reading fan questions, but they say, did we finally get to see this cross state rival really kick into fifth gear in the third period? And my response to that is absolutely. Um, and I love it. I love it a lot. You know, for a long time, the lightning kind of dominated the Florida Panthers and always won these games. But as of late, and especially this season, the Panthers have been playing some of their best hockey and we've gotten to see some fantastic games. It's not a guarantee for the lightning to win these games anymore, uh, which is exciting to see. For, it's great for the state of Florida. Um, I saw a tweet earlier by Tom on Twitter. Uh, he's saying that Florida rules hockey right now, which is always fun because a lot of people give the South hard time uh, when it comes to, to sports like the NHL. But this is great. I love to see it. This is going to be a fantastic playoff matchup if we get it. Hopefully we do. I love this kind of hockey right here. Yeah, I'm super happy that we get this type of hockey between Tampa and Florida. And what I find interesting about that comment is whenever Tampa and Florida would play, they would have a really competitive game. I think that the reason we're getting more of those comments from Lightning fans of, oh, wow, isn't this rivalry so great? It's because Florida's actually really good now. Like, they are a team that doesn't have – any noticeable weaknesses in terms of, oh, they don't have a first line center or, oh, they don't have a, a top four defense or they don't have a starting goalie. They've got everything that you need in order to make the playoffs now. And they've shown in this division that they are willing to take on and defeat the lower tiered teams. They've given Carolina a hard time as well. They've given us a hard time as well. Like, they are a good team. I think a seven game series between uh, Florida and Tampa Bay would be something that a lot of lightning fans and Panthers fans would not be able to handle, but I think it would be some great hockey. It would be a, a lot of fun. That's, that's for sure. Probably bring my stress levels through the roof. And I know we have some Florida Panthers fans that sometimes watch these videos too. So I'd love to hear from you guys as well, what you think of, of how fun that series would be as well. But let's get into our one last fan question. Uh, we have here this one coming from Yellow Bird Marketing. They say, do you think we will see the Gord Coleman Goodrow line hard match the Panthers first line or second line if they face off in the playoffs. Michael, we kind of chatted about this a little bit before we started the video. They didn't have the greatest game. Gord had a good game today. He did have a goal and assist tonight, um, but Coleman and Goodrow did not have the best game. So I would say no. I don't think, unless this, this line turns things around and gets back on track here, uh, maybe, um, but I don't, I don't hope to see that. I don't think they will. Well, so you mentioned the first line and the second line. Both of those were in the question, I believe. So the first line, I would say no, because on the first line in the playoffs, it would always be matched up over the past couple of seasons against the first line of the Lightning because the first line of the Lightning always had Braden Point on it. Braden Point's your engine. He's really the thing that makes your team go. So you, unless you want to put Gord, Goudreau, or Coleman on the first line, they're not going to see first line uh, matching against the first line of the Panthers. Now the second line, that's an interesting question because the lightning have three potential lines that you could match up against the top six. They have the point line, they have the Sorelli line, then they have the Gord line. And I understand the Gord line did not have the greatest game today, but if you're tasking them with being those pests that they were last year, they will do it, and it will work just flawlessly, as we saw in the Stanley Cup Finals and the playoffs overall last year. They were unequivocally probably the second best line for the Lightning in the playoffs. And the first line, of course, had two 30-point scorers, so you, know, you can't really compare to that. But they were awesome. They were They were gritty. They were annoying. They were everything you want them to be out of – a line that's getting matched up against the second line of the Panthers. So it's definitely a possibility when it comes to the second line for the Panthers. But as far as the first line goes, I think you leave that up to Braden Point. 
No question. And it could also be to who's kind of playing hot right now, who's got that hot hand. Maybe that's the line that gets in there. But be interesting to see what Cooper decides to do if we face the Panthers uh, come playoff time. So that's all the fan questions for this one, guys. And we really appreciate your guys' questions. We love to hear from you. So please, if you see that tweet go out after these games asking for fan questions for these videos, please let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear them. We'd love to talk about them. Uh, so give us any and all thoughts always very appreciated michael anything else to add before we wrap up this video nope just very happy that curtis mcelaney had such a great game and was able to quell the storm for a little bit absolutely it was a fantastic game overall and the lightning get back and or continue their winning streak here and now are still in first place in the entire league their next game is going to be against dallas on Tuesday, the 23rd, this game at Dallas at 8.30 p.m. We'll be right here to cover that for you guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications. We have some two very exciting videos coming out very, very soon for you guys to check out. So be sure to stick around for that. Uh, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms, which are all linked down in the description down below for all your live game coverage, news, notes, all that good stuff uh, for your Tampa Bay Lightning. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And remember... Your Tampa Bay Lightning are your defending Stanley Cup champions. Go Bolts.